G'day Starlo here with a quick unboxing of a rather unique spinning reel. It's the 2000 size in the new Stratic FM series that was added to the Shimano lineup for 2024. You might remember that the Stratic FMs won the best new reel at last year's After Tackle Show on the Gold Coast. Now you may remember that a few months ago I did an unboxing of the 2500 model in this series. Here's a few of my initial thoughts on that 2500 when I first unboxed it. Wow, what a smick looking reel. Beautiful cosmetics, brushed silver, uh, some little touches of black. There's some blue on there, but I think that's just the sticker that goes around the spool. So the major colors are that brushed silver, a little bit of gloss silver and some black trim. And I particularly like these diagonal ventilation or weight reducing slots in the spool. The fact that they're at an angle just gives it that really classy look and as you'd expect smooth as with all those bearings. I can see why this reel took out the top gong at this year's tackle show as the best reel of the show. It really is classy especially for a reel that comes in at under $400 at least at the time when I was making this video. That is really good bang for your buck I reckon. As you could probably tell, I was pretty impressed with that reel and I mentioned in the video that they came in sizes from 1000 up to 5000 and that there was a brand new 2000 included in the lineup. Now at the time, I was a little bit confused about what the 2000 was. I assumed it was a 2500 with a shallow spool. <coughs> Wrong. It's actually a 1000 size body with a spool much closer in size to that of a 2500. Now when I found that out, <laughs> I was pretty excited. A lot of you who watch my stuff and follow my writings will know that I love 1000 size reels. They're perfect for the sort of light tackle finesse fishing that I do for things like brim, whiting, flathead and so on in the salt and trout, perch, redfin and even bass in the freshwater plus a lot of other things. But if they have one drawback, those 1000 size reels, it's their line capacity. Now normally that's not a problem, but if you happen to say hook a school mull away while you're targeting brim or pin a rat kingfish while you're chasing flathead, you can find yourself running out of line fairly quickly. The other thing about those small 1000 spools is that as you start to lose a bit of line through re-rigging, tangles, snags or whatever, the effective diameter of the line load starts to shrink fairly rapidly and that has an adverse impact on your casting performance, the smoothness of the drag and even the actual retrieve speed. So the idea of having a larger capacity spool, one much closer in capacity to a 2500 reel, on a 1000 body, well, that ticked all the boxes for me. Anyway, enough chat, let's get the box open and have a look at the 2000. Let's kick off though by having a look at the specifications that are actually printed on the end of the box here and I'll need my glasses for this. All right, so it says Stratic 2000 HG. It has a gear ratio of six to one, maximum drag setting of three kilos or seven pounds. It weighs in at 185 grams or 6.5 ounces, exactly the same, I believe, as the 1000. It's got six plus one bearings, so in other words, six sets of ball bearings and one roller bearing. And when the spool's full of line, it retrieves 81 centimeters or 32 inches per handle turn, which is quite a bit faster than the 1000 and almost as fast as the 2500. And that can be important in some styles of fishing. All right, let's open it up and have a look what's inside. Now, of course, the first thing that comes to hand when you open the box is the paperwork, the exploded diagram of the reel, the parts list, and all the important information about the warranty. I'll put that aside and get into the important stuff. As I'm finding with all the new Shimano's now, not much plastic in there. It's all cardboard, which is really good, makes it recyclable. The handle's separate, and <laughs> out comes the reel, and sure enough, <sighs> It's a 1000 size body, it's quite small, and as always, set up to take the handle on the right hand side, as they always are here in Australia, but I wind left handed. Yep, I'm right handed, but I wind with my left hand. I've done it for years and years, and I wouldn't have it any other way with my light spinning reels, but that doesn't mean you've got to do the same thing, do what works for you. If you want to watch a video I made quite some time ago about choosing which hand to wind your reel with, have a look, I'll put the link up here and also down below in the description and the comments. 
Okay, so I've taken that end cap off and I'm going to attach the handle by screwing it into the left hand side of the reel, holding the rotor head so that I can rotate the handle and tighten it up. And of course it's one of those screw in handles which is a real trademark to me of, of a quality reel rather than the, the post and screw design that you find on some of the lower priced reels. Put the bearing cap back on, finger tight is always enough. <laughs> and uh, just as with the 2500, it's smooth as silk, very, very quiet. It's just a classy looking reel and a classy feeling reel. 1000 size body, so it's exactly the same weight as the 1000 but it takes something like 30 or 40% more line than the 1000, much closer to the line capacity of the 2500. And I reckon that is gonna be really useful, especially for the styles of fishing that I do. Oh, and of course there's those little spacer washers that you can put behind the spool to change the profile of the line load. And that mystery item that I had trouble identifying when we unboxed the 2500, and it turned out to be a replacement anti-twist fin. Remember the anti-twist fin? It's a feature of the reel that Shimano's been making a big song and dance about. Apparently it dramatically reduces line twist and tangles. And I've got to say, from using the 2500 so far, it seems to work. I could count on one hand the number of casting tangles or loops that I've had, much less than a usual reel of that size with braided line. I'm going to fill this up with braid. I'll put six or eight pound braid on it. And I'm going to take it out for a fish as soon as possible and share with you its in the field performance in this video as well. Well that's better, it's nice to get out of the studio, it was getting a little bit hot under those lights. <laughs> Mind you, it's not even all that cool out here in my outdoor studio, it's quite warm, especially for late April and it's very humid in fact it was pouring with rain about 10 or 12 minutes ago it stopped now and the radar shows that i've got a bit of a break so i filled the 2000 up what i did was i put a fair bit of four kilo mono on it first and then i top shotted it with a 150 yard spool of four pound power pro so there's plenty of line on there four pound power pro is great line really tough breaks well over four pound i think I've got a six pound leader on and <laughs> I've put one of the Shimano BT baits on. Jointed swim bait, doesn't run all that deep, but I've caught some really nice brim and flatties on it in the past. We've had a ton of rain in the last few days and um, this closed lake that I'm fishing has come up for a good foot to a foot and a half, I reckon, 40 centimeters. And I'm just wondering if there might be some fish sniffing in around the edges down here. Be a good christening for the 2000 if there is. See how we go. Lots of mullet and other bait fish up in the shallows here, which is a promising sign, <laughs> as are the pelicans. <laughs> They're a bit of a mixed blessing because they do tend to scare the fish away a bit. All right, I might put my gear on this little island here and wade out. See what we can catch on the BT bait. A bit of action here in the shallow so I'm just going to be very very quiet about how I wade out here and I'm going to probe ahead a little bit with a few casts just in case the fish are right in on the edges certainly plenty of mullet in here what else is there I wasn't even sure if I'd need my Mako sunnies but I've ended up putting them on because the sun's actually come back out again after that rain it's quite glary. All right, I've picked up a bit of weed. Even although this lure only runs shallow, <laughs> it's really shallow in here. There's things bow waving around. I think most of them will be mullet, but you never know. I'm working the BT bait with lots of stops and starts because it just suspends beautifully on the stops and they get eaten a lot on the paws. Picked up weed again. Really important to clear every bit of weed off your lure. Really kills the action. Cast beautifully. Nothing like a nice fresh line load <laughs> for casting.
drag again. How's the serenity? <laughs> it had to be said. Ooh, that was a good plonk. While most of these splashes and swirls are mullet, it's always worth covering them with a cast because other things often lurk below. But not this time, it seems. I'm fanning my casts around to cover water. Let's try one down along this way. I've matched up the 2000 Stratic to one of the uh, T-curve premium rods. It's one of the long casts and they're seven feet, eight inches long. Quite a long rod, which I like for land-based. Oh, there you go. Ah. <laughs> well, that didn't take long. What have we got? It's not real big. Uh, might be a flathead, is it? Yep. That's a nice flatty. They do love these swim baits. <laughs> uh, now, can I get you off without getting spiked and without getting hooked? There we go. I've christened the 2000 on about the fourth cast. <laughs> now that lure would have only been running centimetres under the surface but the water where he took it was probably only 30 or 40 centimetres deep as well so all right let's see if we can get you off without having to wade ashore and get my pliers hmm. Hmm. I'm going to wade ashore and get my pliers otherwise I'm going to end up with a hook in myself Yes, I know, it'd make sense to have a pair of pliers on my belt next time. Off you go, mate. <laughs> As the flatty swims away, I wade back out on a slightly different path to test some new water. Jeez, it looks good. I might just probe this area on the other side of the bushes here in case there's something in close. But as the evening slips away and the sun sinks, I'm only rewarded with a couple more half-hearted bumps that fail to connect. <laughs> Still, it's a pleasure just being here. <laughs> well, one legal flathead and a couple of hits is hardly a big shakedown for a new reel, but I made a lot of casts, I made a lot of long casts. It cast superbly, and I didn't get one loose loop or tangle, and that's with a brand new fill of line. And that is a little bit unusual, so maybe there is something about that anti-twist fin. Whatever the case, it's a beautiful reel to use, and I'll be using it a lot more. Stay tuned to my channel, and you'll see some of the fish that I catch on it in coming weeks and months, I'm sure. And if you've enjoyed this, please hit the like down below. And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, jump on and subscribe. There's lots more content like this coming up. All right, I'm going to sneak around the corner here and have another couple of casts before the sun sets. I'll catch you next time. Tight lines. Also be sure to check out these two earlier gear review videos of mine, as well as all the other great content on my Starlo Gets Real channel. Cheers for now. <laughs>